Hi everyone. Um, okay, so we'll get started. Just want to go over a few housekeeping items. So today's session will be recorded um, and will be shared after the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please enter in the webinar control panel and we'll try and answer them at the end of the session. Um, if you have any other questions after the presentation, uh, please feel free to email me at uh, mroberts at newcomp.com. Okay, so thanks for joining us today. Uh, I'm Michael Roberts, one of the practice leads from Newcomp, Newcomp Analytics. And today we're gonna to be talking about Microsoft Power Automate, which is formerly called Flow, and how it can be used for robotic process automation, which is commonly called RPA. So businesses operate in an increasingly connected world and have made many important strides in back office and business process automation. But in many cases, there are still a patchwork of manual tasks that are completed with humans that hold the business back or absorb people's time. So today we'll look at how to automate processes using cloud applications and legacy desk applications, desktop applications, using a no-code solution. And we'll also see how to use AI models to help workflows that would have been impossible just a few years ago. So that's our topic for today, Power Automate and RPA, and I hope you find it interesting. Just a few words about Newcomp Analytics. Um, as the name implies, our firm specializes in analytics. Uh, so this includes data science, cloud adoption strategies, data visualization, and information management. Newcomp made our entry into analytics back in the late 1990s and have focused on ever since. So over the years, we've had the privilege to work with many vendors and clients on consulting engagements, and we formalized our partnerships with the firms and technologies shown on the slide. And these are technologies that we uh, have found to work well for our clients and we're proud to be associated with. So if you have questions uh, for us, uh, please reach out. We're happy to help with a wide range of analytics requirements. If you're looking to build customer segmentation models or implement a data governance strategy or improve your planning uh, processes or even have a first of the kind idea, we'll work to understand your business problems and recommend a technology solution that's based on our experience. Newcom provides a range of options for service delivery. We can build POCs, we can work as part of a development team, provide operational support, mentoring, or other managed services. And although our team has been working remotely for about a year now, we are still providing services to the entire Canadian market, um, as well as supporting our friends in the US and many clients throughout the Caribbean. So we can't wait to get back down there. Okay, so in this presentation today, we're discussing Power Automate's origins and recent history, including Microsoft's acquisitions to ex extend their RPA capabilities. Then we move on to some core RPA concepts and guidelines for selecting an RPA use case. Uh, we'll also discuss implementation advice and then provide a walkthrough of an example solution that might give you some ideas of what's possible with Power Automate. So I'm going to get started by going through the role of Power Automate. Where does it come from? How does it relate to the rest of the Microsoft architecture and the rest of the industry? So formerly called Microsoft Flow, Power Automate is a web-based service that creates automated workflows between applications and different services. You can use this technology to synchronize files, generate notifications, perform cognitive analytics, collect or share data, and much more. A version of Power Automate is included in, as part of the Office 365 suite and can handle basic Office application automation. It really is a universal automation tool that connects all kinds of applications through a collection of standard, premium, or customized connectors. The key idea with Power Automate is to identify repetitive tasks that involve humans and then turn them into multi-step workflows. One of the best new features in Power Automate is the UI flow, which allows Power Automate to use robotic process automation, to take manual human tasks, for example, reading information from one system to another, and make them into a workflow that can be played back and then reused without the human having to do the extra work. Power Automate and RPA in general focus on assisting tasks that involve humans. This is a little different from BPM solutions that focus on streamlining a business's overall processes or compliance or extend complete business processes back to customers and suppliers. You can think of RPA as a surface level integration that does not replace everything underlying the business processes, but rather allows manual processes, especially those involving humans, to be completed more quickly and more accurately. So these UI flows can be created using an attended RPA process where humans initiate the task and perhaps respond to prompts like saying yes or no to an answer, or they can be completely automated uh, and monitored via the web or a mobile application. The Power Automate features continue to grow. The newest addition is in preview being Process Advisor, which is a process binding capability to understand how people work and provide insights in the time consuming processes that might be well suited for automation. Uh, this can help generate a process map for further analysis and to generate insights. 
To understand Power Automate, it makes sense to take a look at the broader Power family. Power Automate originally um, was part of Office 365 and extended to dynamic deployments and Azure services to handle notifications, to synchronize files, collect data, and perform other tasks. It has grown to be a very important member of the Power family and integrates with Power Apps, Virtual Agents, and Azure. Power Apps and Power Virtual Agents allow low-code development of uh, forms and interact chatbot-like experiences, whereas Power BI is the market-leading visualization platform. AI Builder is a new platform capability that enables you to add machine intelligence and cognitive services to process automation, and we'll discuss this in a moment. If you're working in Azure, if, the, if you're working in the Azure environment, you'll find the Azure Logic apps to be similar to Power Automate, but geared to professional developer as opposed to the end user. As a consulting firm, we're often amazed at how influential the Gartner Group reports are. In the latest 2020 RPA evaluations, Microsoft's Power Automate is considered a visionary in the magic quadrant as shown by the green arrow. Gartner notes that Microsoft upgraded the previous product flow and has added general purpose RPA capabilities. The expanded RPA abilities come with the acquisition of Soft Emotive, which was the previous RPA, which was in the previous RPA magic quadrant. Soft Emotive had three key product offerings, one automation, process robot, and a development language called Robin, which was rebranded under the Power Automate umbrella. The acquisition helped Microsoft save a lot of development time. With respect to key strengths, Gartner notes that Microsoft has positioned their RPA solution within a broad set of existing technologies. When automation and process robot fill gaps in the desktop automation area that Microsoft solution faced and provides support for integrating with web applications, legacy applications, Citrix platforms, and green screen emulators. Businesses with existing Microsoft application ecosystems and a need for end-to-end -end process automation will find the, pro the solution well integrated. Premium pricing is available on a per flexible per user or per flow basis, and pricing is aggressive compared to most RPA providers, especially for unattended automation. The web-centric de web deployment model follows the typical SaaS design used in R the RPA market. With respect to innovation, Microsoft is quite unique in the wide range of AI and machine learning integrations available to Power Automate as a result of the Azure Cloud backbone. Gartner does list a few cautions. Microsoft RPA product is still new and customers are still discovering any limitations. As the integration of Win Automation is still evolving, frequent updates can be expected over the coming year. With respect to licensing, Gartner notes there was some confusion because Office 365 users will have access to a free version, while premium connection connectors and unattended RPA require an additional license. The links to the Gartner report reference are References in this section are included in the slides, and we encourage everyone to take a look. Please note that the Gartner report was licensed by Microsoft for public distribution. So let's review some of the key ideas and concepts that make up Power Automate, starting with the connectors. Connectors are essentially translators that allow different services to connect and are implemented as a proxy or API wrapper. The underlying services in turn talk to Microsoft Power Automate orchestration and management. Users can connect their accounts or data sources and leverage the pre-built actions and triggers to build apps and workflows, either on the cloud or on their desktops. In Power Automate, these connect connectors are categorized into standard and premium. The free license is the one included in your standard Office 365 subscription. Triggers are the events that start a workflow and what your workflow looks for. An example would be a file arriving in a folder or an email arriving with specific characteristics. Actions are the tasks that the workflow completes, for example, registering someone in Salesforce or sending a reply email or maybe sending a newly received invoice for approval. Examples of connectors include Salesforce, Office 365, Twitter, Dropbox, Google, and many others. You can also have a custom connector. For example, you can tell Power Automate about a web service, including the, the indication it requires and the triggers or actions it supports. If you like, you can also submit your custom connector to Microsoft, and if it's approved, it can actually be shared with all the other users. The list of Power Automate connectors is growing all the time as a result of Microsoft's investments, synergy with the Power Family product line, and the growing user community. The connectors used for common office automation tasks are standard and included with the Office 365 license or basic subscription. Premium connectors extend Power Automate's reach, for example, to integrate with Zendesk or systems like Vanna or MailChimp. If you want to run flows that include remote desktop automation completely automatically and completely un in a completely unattended fashion, then additional licenses are required and we'll go over the, cost the current pricing at the end of this presentation today. Templates are like pre-built combinations of connectors and help you get started with an automation task. Before you build anything from scratch, first check the, temp the template library. There is very likely one that you can leverage. 
In our main example in today's webinar, we'll be using a couple of different templates to accomplish our goals. AI Builder is a new capability shared with other members of the Power family that adds machine learning and cognitive services to automate processes that would normally require human intervention. There are several categories of AI Builder models, such as category classification, so an example would be finding text within a document, entity extraction, form processing, object detection, for example, recognizing and counting things in images, or making a prediction. The example we'll look at today is how AI Builder can analyze invoices in a wide variety of formats pick a common fields and then direct them into a summary format and then into a legacy application through desktop automation. As previously mentioned, Power Automate has solutions for web-based interactions as well as remote desktop automation applications. Today we'll look at a simple code-free automation using the latest Power Automate desktop client and recorder to handle a broad spectrum of UI automation. <clears throat> Okay, so what we're gonna do is walk through how we can use Power Automate to solve a business automation challenge. I think many people attending the webinar today already have an idea about processes that they would like to automate. The question is, what's a good candidate for automation? Traditional logic is that we should look for processes that are good combinations of data-driven, data -driven, repeatable, and relatively straightforward. We're hoping the examples we show you today will let you see how you can move beyond simple office automation and accomplish worthwhile automation tasks using a low-code solution. One thing I'd like to highlight is that AI Builder lets us perform tasks that would normally require cognitive services, for example, identifying fields in an invoice, and that would normally involve a human decision-making process. There are a range of documents, text, and images processing capabilities available in AI Builder. Power Automate lets us extend the reach of our solutions beyond the web and back to legacy desktop applications. So we can have workflows that run on remote machines via the secure Power Automate gateway and feed data from unrelated web processes to those remote automation tasks. So now there's a much broader range of tasks that are repeatable as well. So what we're gonna do now is walk through an example of a business process that has several manual steps. We'll walk through how each can be automated. Uh, sorry, we'll walk through each and then look at the whole thing can be automated using Power Automate. Firstly, we have vendors who are sending invoices for their services to a designated email address. We know emails have the word invoice in the subject line and invoices are sent as attachments in either PDF or image format. When the emails arrive, and we don't know when they'll arrive, the attachments are saved by a human into a folder on OneDrive. The invoices, which are in all kinds of layouts, are then reviewed by the same person and key figures are typed into an Excel document for another team member to review. From here, another person logs into a legacy application, opens a form, and creates a new record and enters a few key fields and then saves the record. So this is our scope and we're gonna take a look at how to break this into steps and how to accomplish this using Power Automate. If we think about what triggers the overall process, and it, it really is the email arriving with the right characteristics. There's a manual step that takes place after the email arrives, which is identifying that there's an invoice and then saving the file onto OneDrive in a suitable structure. The new file appearing in OneDrive is also potentially a trigger for subsequent steps. The next process involving human intelligence is looking through the actual invoice, which can be many different kinds of format, and then transposing the information into the Excel summary. The final manual process involves a human logging into a desktop application on an entirely separate machine and then re-keying the information once again. So we can bundle the human action into sort of three sets of requirements and we have two triggers to work from. So to get started, we can go to powerautomate.com, which will redirect us to the correct site and we'll see the Power Automate interface. From here, we can see our flows, find templates or connectors or monitor our deployed solutions. You can also access Power Automate via your Office 365 subscription. Before creating anything manually, you should always stop to see if there is a Power Automate template that can help. In our case, we know that emails are arriving at our Gmail account and we want to save them into OneDrive. A quick search on Gmail save attachment OneDrive shows there are two likely templates that can help us. I'm using the one for uh, OneDrive for business, so I'll pick the template on the left. In step one, we're entering the connector information for Gmail. So you can see I've entered the account where the emails are being sent. 
and I'm entering the account where I'd like to have the files saved. All secrets are securely stored by Microsoft so the Power Automate flow can be automated. If these passwords change and the flow can't connect, then you'll see this logged by Power Automate and you'll get an email. And if you use the mobile application, you'll also see the message there. In step two, we're filling out the details of the template. So when a new email arrives, we're gonna check a few things. Firstly, we have to make sure it's going to the right person. Uh, secondly, we're looking to see that the subject contains invoice, and then we're looking to see that it actually has attachments. So we know that the invoices are sent to demo at newcomp.com, and the subject will contain the word invoice. And we've told all the vendors to include, invoice, include their invoices as attachments in image or PDF format. So here we're looking at an expanded view of when a new email arrives. And here we finished with the first step and have moved on to filling in the details of what to do with the attachment. So as you can see, the output from the previous step attachments is passed over to the next step, which is applied to every attachment. For each attachment, we wanna create a file on one driver for the processing. So you can see the attachment has been passed to the next step. And we have another step here, which will actually create the file on OneDrive. We want to put a bit of thought into how the file is created in OneDrive. We want to be able to find them in the future, so dumping them into one list won't work in the long term. If the create file dialog, in the create file dialog, we can see the root directory has been specified. In this case, Webinar Power Automate. And we've taken several variables from the Gmail to create the file name. So the attachment has been passed over and then has been appended to the path. So we're gonna have a different directory for each user who has sent me emails. And the file name itself will be a combination of from, the date, and the attachment's name. And the file content will be the original email, uh, uh, the original invoice. So the folder path is the root plus a dynamic component. Okay, so now we're actually ready to test the flow, which is lots of fun. We manually set up an email for our target account and an invoice attachment and the subject line containing the word invoice. Power Automate used the Gmail connector to monitor the account and when it sees that an email that matched the criteria was processed, it saves that file to OneDrive with the file name that we've defined. We can review the test results if we wanna make sure it's okay and tell Power Automate to reuse the previous tests if we wanna make minor adjustments uh, and test the system again. Uh, so here we can see an example of an invoice and the email that's been sent over. And on the next screen, we'll take a look at what's happened in OneDrive. So to check the flow, we're checking the outputs. If we go to our OneDrive, we'll see that it's created uh, a subfolder for the email. And if we look at the file itself, you'll see that it has the correct name. Uh, we can also track the uh, performance of the flow over time. So this could save someone a lot of time all by itself. And since we can implement naming standards and folder structures, we can do things that we've kind of difficult for a human to maintain so precisely. So let's review our first requirement. So let's recap. So we've met the first requirement. We have a solution now that process notices the email is arriving and then saves it to OneDrive. Next, we wanna think about what we can do to process something as complex as an invoice. There are many different fields and countless different formats and, uh, in an invoice, and it can be difficult to transpose those into Excel. So as before, we're gonna start by seeing if there's a template that can, that can help us. So what we can do is a search on when a file is created, and we can see that one of the triggers is for a file being created in OneDrive. So we're gonna start there. So here we can be the when a file is created dialog box by identifying the parent folder, which is our webinar Power Automate, and we've told the system we'd like to include subfolders. Our previous Power Automate flow will be writing files into different directories, so including subfolders is important. There's no need to specify a different setting for each customer unless you have very unique requirements. Now we need some help understanding what is inside the invoice. So we're gonna add a step to the flow and you select AI Builder, which has a range of cognitive functions. So here on the screen, we can see a list of some of AI Builder's features. Uh, the one we're interested in here is processing and saving information from invoices. But there are a lot of other interesting ones, such as processing inputs from receipts, processing photographs, and recognizing text and images. 
So we're going to select this one and feed our invoices to the AI Builder. So here you can see the previously completed um, step when a file is created is passing the file content to AI Builder. And we've confirmed that it's specifically what is being passed as opposed to the name and location of the file. AI Builder's capabilities are very impressive and we encourage everyone to take a look at Microsoft's documentation. Here's a quick look at some of the fields that are extracted by the AI Builder process. So this is a uh, developing list, but you can see that the documentation will specify the format of the invoice. So it has to be a PDF or an image and its size. And these are all the different fields that the AI uh, Builder is capable of extracting. So we can look for the amounts, we can look at the confidence of having the amount correct, billing addresses, the confidence of having the billing address correct, the customer address, customer numbers and names, uh, vendor numbers and names, invoice dates. And each one of these different fields will be identified if present in the invoice and will be available for any downstream processes in Power Automate. So you have a long list of addresses and, and other variables that um, are extracted automatically. So in our flow, we've also added an additional step, which is to add a row into a table. See that is specified here. So what we want to do basically is to take the fields that have been uh, passed from AI Builder and store them in Excel. Here we completed the first two steps. Uh, now we've identified the location of the Excel file. So it's on OneDrive and we've located the specific Excel file invoices. Now what we have to do is to tell Power Automate um, in this, where the file is and how to pass the parameters into it. So we go to the next screen. Uh, you can see that we've set up a table. The table's name is table one in Excel. And here are the various columns that we want to populate. Their invoice ID, invoice date, vendor name, and the invoice total. So what, these, uh, what this will do is every time a uh, file is created, it'll be passed to AI Builder. AI Builder is going to decipher the content of the invoice, even if it's in a, a variety of different formats. And then it's going to pass these fields into the Excel file. So let's go to the next screen and show how we're at. So you can see here the fields invoice ID, invoice date, vendor name, uh, et cetera, are being passed over to the Excel table, which is listed on the left. So this is how the two sets of information are, are combined within Power Automate. Um, so this is done by, by clicking Add Dynamic Content, and then you can select from any of the fields that I showed in the previous screen. And believe it or not, we're almost done our second requirement as well. So here we've saved the workflow and we're testing it. So what I've done is I've manually saved an invoice in OneDrive, and that triggers the, uh, the flow. I can see the flow started and correctly completed, so I can move on to verifying the Excel file content. So here we've manually saved an invoice to OneDrive. That triggers the flow to map the content from the invoice itself down to the Excel file. So next step, we're gonna actually go into the Excel file itself. And here you can see the first row has been saved and there's the original invoice on, on the left. So it's an overview of, of how invoices can be read and processed by from OneDrive and stored in Excel. Now to continue testing this, what we've done is taken a variety of different invoice formats. So in the background, you can see that there's three or four different types of invoices that are very um, unique. And we've passed those through AI Builder and you can see that the records are correctly identified and passed over to Excel. So AI Builder is able to correctly process the invoices despite the fact they're very, very different. And again, it does this by leveraging a pre-built AI model that Microsoft will continue to develop and refine over time. So in terms of end-to-end -end testing, uh, what we're gonna do is send an invoice to the target email, which in turn saves the invoice to OneDrive. The second workflow is triggered by the new file in OneBox and turns output, turns the output over to AI Builder, which identifies the fields, which are then saved into the Excel summary. So the first flow is actually triggering the second flow. So on your screen here, we can see a record of the flows and these are all maintained in the interface. You can switch them on or off as required. Um, and, uh, and check the uh, history over time. So let's kind of recap. Um, 
so far we haven't had to write any code at all. Everything that has been done has been using existing templates and connectors. The third requirement, however, involves desktop automation. We have a legacy application, in this case an access application, that includes a form of some buttons. And what we want to do is enter some summary information into it. So this is a different kind of automation challenge because the machine will need to know how to open the application, create a new record, find the right fields in the invoice, and enter them into the application, then save the record and close the application. So to do this, we're going to use desktop automation as well as some of the other techniques that we've used for the second requirement. So here's a look at our legacy application that's the target of the next automation step. So it's a Microsoft Access application with a data entry form. Doing this currently requires knowledge of how to open Access, how to work with the application, uh, as well as knowing which fields to remap into the invoice. We also need the automation to click buttons and to create and save records. So as with our previous steps, we'll start by searching for a template. But in this case, we're gonna use a new component called Power Automate Desktop. This application, which is installed locally on your machine, allows you to record all the manual steps involved with working with the legacy application. Basically, I'll give desktop an example of how I enter information into the form and then plug in some manual numbers so that it uh, has a basis. And then we can update the recording to identify the data points and connect that recording to AI Builder's output, which will funnel those invoice values into the desktop application when it replays the recorded steps. So here's an example of what the interface looks like. You can see that there are some buttons which the user will have to know how to use to create a new record, a uh, button to save the record, um, and then they will have to know which field is entered into uh, which box uh, in order to make this work correctly. So as I mentioned before, start by looking for a template. In this case, we're looking for one related to desktop automation. So this installs the application on my machine. I've also installed Microsoft's Power Automate Gateway so the Power Automate service can pass values from the web to my local machine. So here I've started the desktop recorder uh, and as I enter information into the legacy application, every single step that I, I take is being captured. So these steps including opening the application, um, opening the form, clicking new, entering each text box, adding a sample value, saving the record, and then closing the application. So let's take a look at what Power Automate uh, Desktop can do with respect to controlling the desktop application. So firstly, you can see that Power Automate Desktop can do a lot of different things from cartography all the way to web automation. So it's not uh, specifically for UI automation. In the window here, we've zoomed in on some of the steps related to UI uh, automation. So you can see some of the options, just filling in forms, moving things around the screen, uh, or changing the interface. So once the recording is complete, I can play it, and this ensures the recording steps are correct. As I watch the application, it uh, will open itself, and the sample data will be re-entered into the Access application. So when you're doing this, you want to make sure you don't forget any steps like creating a new record, etc. So once I can see the recording has captured the steps that are required to work with the application, I can then create some variables that will serve a couple of purposes. Firstly, I want to add these to the desktop automation in place of the test values that I supplied. And secondly, I'll connect these to AI Builder, just like we did in the previous examples. So in this case, we just have four variables. We have the invoice date, the number, a total, and a vendor that correspond to what the legacy app access application form required. So in this step, I've added the four variables into the desktop automation flow. Again, here they are, the invoice date, number, total, and vendor name. And here's the completed desktop flow. So you can see we've got uh, a number of pauses. So we are gonna be waiting after the application opens. And then the send key um, results, send key commands are sending things like the invoice number, the invoice date, the vendor name into the application as opposed to setting the sample data that I originally recorded. So the steps labeled click UI element are the recorded steps showing how to navigate through the legacy application, uh, send key again, or the commands that send values into the interface. Um, and these reference variables will be populated by AI Builder. So what we're doing in the next step, in step four, we're connecting the Power Automate desktop step to the same workflow as we used in the previous requirement. This means that the arrival of an invoice in OneDrive 
uh, wherever, whether these be put manually or received via email, will trigger the step as well. So you can see we've added, you can see the original add a row to Excel picture on the left, and we have our new option here to run the Power Automate Desktop on the right. The run a flow built with Power Automate Desktop currently is showing the variables that we just created, just like the columns in the Excel table. And now what we'll do is map the AI builder outputs as required. So here's the final flow that shows the trigger AI builder on the two targets, Excel and the Power Automate Desktop. So to summarize, a new file appearing on OneDrive will be passed AI Builder. So we have the new file arriving past AI Builder, uh, which will extract all of the invoice specific fields. So these fields will then be mapped into the columns of the Excel table, saved as a new row, um, and then also passed over to Power a Desktop Automation Script, which takes the values and then enters them into the legacy application running on a remote machine. So in step six, what we're doing is adding an on-premise gateway. Um, so this application, if the ap access application will be running on a different machine from where Power Automate Desktop was recorded, you need to have the desktop, the on-premise gateway installed in that machine too. The gateway is used by several members of the Power uh, family, including Power Apps, Power BI, et cetera. So finally, in step number seven, we're gonna have our end-to-end -end testing. So we can send a sample invoice to the target email address. This triggers the file that's being saved to OneDrive. The new file in OneDrive in turn triggers the population of data in Excel and a legacy desktop application. So let's review our requirements and see what we've done so far. So requirement one was primarily focused on automating a web process to save invoices from Gmail to OneDrive. Requirement two required to use AI Builder to automate the process of the invoice file to extract data and three require connected legacy applications running on a remote desktop and passing information from AI Builder over to it. So all in all, we had a couple of different triggers and three templates uh, to accomplish this. So what I'll do is I'm gonna drag over the completed build and you can take a look at how these are put together. So on the screen, you'll see um, the interface and on the left, you can see my flows. Uh, I'll take a look at the first one. Um, so we're gonna edit that. So we can see the different steps. So when a new email arrives, if I click that, you'll see um, the inbox, um, which is the folder that's being monitored. Here you can see the uh, email address that's being tracked. We can see the subject has to contain the word invoice. Um, and then the next step, you can see apply to each attachment. If we expand that, you can see there's an output that's being passed over from when the email arrived. In this case, it's the invoice. And in OneDrive, you can see that there is a root folder identified, Power Automate. Um, and then a slash and then the from. So what it's gonna do is make a subdirectory for each person who sent me an invoice. And then the file name is gonna be the from, the receive date, and then the attachments name and the content will be the attachment itself. So when this runs, I'm gonna have a neatly organized flow of a neatly organized structure containing all of my invoices. Um, the name is such that I can forward these to different people uh, and they can easily track where they're from, when it was received, uh, things like that. So there's the first flow we wanna take a look at. The next is the second step. Um, so we're just gonna take a look at this one. So this was the one that saves information into Excel. So we take a look, uh, um, the trigger in this case is OneDrive. So when a file is created in this folder, and we're also looking at any subfolder, then it's passed over to AI Builder. So what this is doing is it's capturing the file content this is the, um, the, the process that we selected that will um, focus on invoices. And then we're gonna write the information over into Excel. So if we look at the details here where our location is OneDrive for Business. We've got the subfolder set up. I've identified the Excel file that I wanna be the target. Um, I have a table set up and then the four fields uh, from AI Builder. And again, there were um, many dozens of fields that are captured are written into the Excel file uh, so that someone can go and look at them and get kind of a, a sense of how many invoices are arriving and what the uh, dollar value is. So this is our second requirement, which was to detect a file had been created to extract the fields from it, um, which is something that would have been possible even just a few years ago, and then take some key fields and then re-enter them into Excel for someone to look at. And then the third flow, which is the, the finished uh, view, 
has two steps. So what we're doing here is we're tracking when a file arrives. Again, um, OneDrive, and this is going to be populated by reading from our email. Uh, we're using AI Builder to extract the file content, and then we're doing two things with it in this case. So on one hand, um, we're writing the information out into Excel for one person to look at. And then on the other hand, we're running a Power BI desktop automate job, which is going to pass these four values back over to the recorded script that actually will populate the, um, the legacy application. So let's just take a look at how that is constructed. So on the screen now, I'm going to add AI Builder. So you can see that um, we have all the steps that are required for the RPA process to run. So the first one was to actually open the application. So we're running it from this location and then we're gonna wait two seconds. And then you can see the next set of steps were flagged as being auto-generated. So you can see um, I clicked uh, on a button, invoice summary, and that's what opened up my form. Um, I found a button which is labeled add new record and I pressed it. So that was recorded. Then I waited two seconds. Um, and then we can see there's a send keys command. And in this case, instead of the original sample that I typed in, it's gonna pass over the variable invoice number, which we saw in the previous screen. Then I move over to invoice date, wait two seconds, and then pass the invoice date and so on with the vendor name and so, uh, until the end when I save the, um, save the record. And again, what's nice about this is that it actually understands how to navigate the interface and the fact that there are buttons at different positions and that have different names is understood by, by the tool so that it can interface with them. So this is how you can automate a wide range of um, kind of what would be quite a tricky process even a few years ago um, to uh, integrate with legacy applications. So here we can see that the, uh, the AI Builder um, has uh, fed the information into two targets, um, one Excel and the other Power Automate. So in terms of uh, managing the solution, um, if I go back to my flows and just click on, click on any one of them, brings me into a management screen. Um, so here you can see when it was run, what type it is, uh, kind of a description, who owns it. Um, you can also go and edit the, the template from here. Um, if you have any problems with connections, this would be where you would fix them. So here's my connection to Gmail, there's my connection to OneDrive. So everything is in sort of one place. Uh, let's go and take a look at the next one, which was just the uh, interface with uh, Excel. So here you can see the successes, it takes about 13 seconds each to run. Um, and here are the different connectors, again, and services that are used. Um, and then um, the third flow is, is quite similar. Um, this one takes a little bit longer because it's doing more things. It takes about a minute for it to um, extract all the information and then log into my desktop and enter the information into the legacy application. Um, there's also a monitor tab here. Um, so if we go into our Cloudflow activity, um, you can kind of see when everything ran, what was successful, if there was a problem. Um, for example, I switched some off and uh, it notified me that because of that, they didn't complete as expected. Uh, you can see all the desktop flows when uh, when they executed, whether it succeeded or if there was some issue, uh, if the gateway was switched off, things like that. So you have an understanding of when they ran. Um, and there are a lot of other connectors and, and templates in here that I'd encourage everyone to take a look at. So if we go to the connectors for a second. Um, in here, you can filter on the types of connectors. So um, let's take a look first at all the standard ones. So even if you just get the, um, the Power Automate that comes with Office 365, you'll have access to a wide range of things, um, to Google, to, to Google Drive, to, um, to OneDrive, to various email providers, um, all kinds of different things. And then if there's something that you need to connect to um, that's in the premium connectors, then you will need to get a licensed option. Um, and here we have uh, all of those examples. So this would be like MailChimp and and certain um, certain things like Vena and other applications that um, require that you pay to use them. Um, you can also see all the templates. Um, as I said, uh, you shouldn't like start building one of these things from scratch. Um, if you do a, a save or a search in the templates, so save file to um, OneDrive. You'll see that there's literally dozens of different templates um, that you can use, um, that you can converting files into SharePoint lists and integrating with um, Word documents and, and basically any kind of office automation task that you you could uh, conceive of is going to be there. Um, and there's there's options to run them in unattended fashion or attended. Um, you can have them linked to a button. There's all kinds of different ways of of running it. Um, the ones I um, 
built uh, match our use case of, of receiving an email and wanting to respond to it in a number of different ways. But uh, you can modify these to you know, be triggered by a person. Maybe they have a batch of invoices in a directory you want to run all at once to assist them. There, there's a number of ways that um, it can be used either in a um, automated or, or um, managed fashion. Um, okay, so let's go back to our... Okay, so again, um, so look at our requirements. Web automation was the was the first uh, the first key task. Uh, we wanted to make sure that when we received um, emails uh, with uh, invoices, they were captured. We wanted to use cognitive services to look through the invoice and process it, pick up key details, and transpose them into targets. Um, and then in requirement three, we wanted to actually automate the entry of some of those into a desktop application. So in terms of power um, automate pricing, um, these slides will be circulated and this is a link to the current pricing screen. Um, you're looking basically at about $15 per user in order to uh, run most common um, applications that you would uh, need. Um, that's the one I've been using for uh, everything today, this one here. Um, it allows me to automate many of these tasks. Uh, assuming you're an Office 365 user, what I recommend is that you try out some of these ideas. Um, and if you need some additional features, then look into it. If you run into things uh, or want to use a fully automated um, deployment on a large scale, then you know feel free to reach out to the account rep at Newcomp and we can help you out with the recommendation. Um, so that's going to conclude the, most of the material I wanted to cover for today's session. I just wanted to make a note that um, um, Newcomp has a, certainly values um, helping our clients uh, maintain their education and, and skills. Um, becoming experts in the technologies that they're deploying. We're certainly here to help, so please feel free to contact the training department at any time to get the latest schedule. We're running classes uh, all the time. So I think with that, we'll just open it up to uh, any questions that people have. If there's any questions that uh, we haven't covered, um, feel free to reach out to me via email um, after the, uh, the presentation. All right, um, so at that point, I guess we'll conclude our, um, our presentation for today, and uh, yeah, thank you for joining. Um, and we will speak to you soon. Thank you.